Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam finally shows us how to set up a dual boot system. Wow, I thought this day would never come. Okay, so a couple things before we get started. As you've probably already guessed, I'm going to warn you to back up everything again. Uh, at this point, you should have already backed up everything, but uh, especially in this stage, you could accidentally click a wrong partition, install Ubuntu where uh, you don't exactly want to, and wipe out important data. So at this point, uh, back up all your data just in case. Um, the other thing, uh, I'm going to do this in VirtualBox just so uh, I get an awesome screencast, but the steps are going to be uh, identical to what you're going to do. And the other thing is that this is going to be very in-depth, and I'm going to link all the videos that I've already done uh, in a comprehensive way. So this will take some time, but uh, hopefully this will be enough knowledge so that you can set up your dual boot system exactly the way you want to. Okay, so at this point, you should put in your live CD that you created a long time ago. Uh, or your live USB stick. Uh, again, uh, this is going to be similar you, uh, for Ubuntu, Lubuntu, Kubuntu, Zubuntu. Uh, basically, all the Ubuntu derivatives pretty much have the uh, same installer. Now, I'm going to do this with Ubuntu 12.04, long-term support, and it's my recommendation that if, as long as Windows 7 is supported on your PC, use Ubuntu 12.04. If you don't like Unity, uh, in a few uh, videos later on, I'm actually going to show you how to install like XFCE or some other Windows manager. It's really, really easy to do, but if you install Ubuntu 12.04 long-term support, then you can just follow along very easily with what I am doing. So this stage you should come to this menu where you can either try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. Uh, this time we're actually going to click the install Ubuntu. So basically this is uh, preparing to install Ubuntu. Uh, this will go over uh, some of the preliminary stuff, making sure you have at least four gigs of hard drive space, which I do. Uh, internet connection, which uh, at the moment I don't, but that doesn't matter. So therefore I cannot download updates while installing and I cannot install third party software. Now, if you have an internet connection, I recommend checking at least the install the third-party software. Uh, if you want, you can check download updates, although your install will take much, much longer. And of course, after the install, you'll be able to update anyway, so it's up to you if you want to check this or not. I am not going to check this. I'm just going to uh, check the install third-party software. Click Continue. So we've actually come to our first critical setup decision. Now, if you want to totally wipe out everything on your hard drive and go with just Ubuntu, for example, you've said, screw you Windows, I'm going Ubuntu full time, then you will want erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now, as this says, warning, this will delete all files on the disk. This means it will delete everything, all of your Windows install and all of your data. So if you really want to do this, you can go through with that, but make sure you have a backup because it will erase everything. Now, you probably have another option that I don't, and that is uh, install Ubuntu alongside Windows or something to that effect. Now, if last week's video scared you with the whole partitioning thing, you can do the automatic uh, uh, Ubuntu install alongside Windows. That'll automatically partition everything for you. You really don't have to think about anything. Um, if you want to try that out, go for it. Uh, in the past, I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, me, personally, I like a little bit more control. I like to see what's going on, and that's why I had you manually partition everything. But uh, if you want to try that because manually partitioning scared you, go ahead, try that. Um, hopefully, you backed up your data just in case something goes wrong with that part. If you've been following along so far and you automatically set up your partitions last week manually, then we are going to click the something else and just click continue. Okay, and at this stage we actually have a partition manager. So this is yet a third way to partition stuff out. So last week, uh, if you didn't partition anything out yet, uh, you have a chance to actually partition here if you so choose. So basically we are at the point where we have to click the correct partition. Now if you have Windows and you have the data partition and a system recovery partition, make sure you pick the correct partition. So uh, if you remember back to the Windows video uh, partitioning in Windows 7, uh, I said whatever you're going to make for your Linux uh, uh, partitions, uh, format those as FAT32 just for a, the time being. The reason I had you do that is because then you would see the type FAT32 and then you'd have a better idea, oh, that is my blank partition that I want to use for Linux. 
So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to say, for my case, it's going to be change. And then you are going to select what file system you want. Now, remember, if it's the Linux operating system, you want uh, the AXT4 journal file system. And you're going to have to say format this partition. Now, anytime you format a partition, it wipes out everything. So again, make sure you have the correct partition. The mount point is going to be root. So this little slash here just basically means root. Um, I don't have a lot of space. I should have left a little bit more space um, because we're actually going to have to create another partition swap. I should quickly explain what swap is. The swap area uh, is basically um, if if you have uh, if all of your memory on your computer is being used up, then Linux will dump this uh, the extra the used up memory onto your hard drive um, uh, in order to free up uh, memory on your hard drive. So as far as how much swap area you should create, uh, everyone debates. Uh, uh, of how much space. Um, I have 8 gigs of RAM, so uh, on my system I rarely use um, the swap area, uh, but people usually recommend at least doubling however much RAM you have. Um, if you're tight on hard drive space, honestly you could probably get away with just using equal amounts of, of hard drive space. So for example if you have 8 gigs of RAM, you could just use 8 gigs of uh, swap area. So for this demo I'm going to quickly sh uh, do an EXT Four, I'm going to do this as uh, basically 9,000 megabytes. So this is basically a warning saying I'm going to have a new partition size and this is going to basically wipe out everything. So at this point I basically have 9 gigs for my operating system and then I have some free space right here and I'm going to make that the rest of that my swap. So I'm going to click add and then now I'm going to call this the swap area and then say OK. So this is the bare minimum of what you will need for your Linux install. Again, you'll probably maybe want a little bit more swap area uh, depending on how much memory you have, but just for this example I'm just going to use this. And you're going to need your root partition where the actual operating system is actually going to be installed. Now I'm going to quickly show you another option. Uh, in one of the videos I mentioned that if you wanted to you could store all of your data, your Linux data on an ext4 uh, file system. So if you're going that route, depending on how this is set up, um, you, uh, depending on how you partitioned everything, um, we're going to create at le uh, one partition is going to be where the operating system installed, which is root in this case. And I'm just, for this example, I'm just going to say 6000. And then over here, if you had a, the other FAT32, depending on how you set everything up for your partitioning, um, you could use that to uh, basically mount into something called root home. And what this basically is, you're going to want this big if you're going to store your data. It's going to be however much data you have. Uh, and, and you're going to want this at least bigger than that. But uh, basically slash home is uh, equivalent to basically my documents or that folder in Windows. But what's nice is Linux allows you to mount this on a separate partition. So if the entire operating system crashes later on during the install of the operating system, you can just remount this home directory without formatting it and boom you'll be right back up with all of your data perfectly safe so I would recommend doing that um, so I'm just going to partition that out just for this example so if you are planning on storing your data in the ext4 separate partition like I've got set up here you're going to see this this is where the operating system is going to be installed this is where your documents will be stored eventually and then you'll still need swap area if you are planning on storing all of your data in your NTFS partition then you will just have your operating system or your root partition here and then you will just have your swap area set up like this now if you set it up this way don't worry you will still get a home directory where you can store your Linux documents if you so choose but the uh, the thing now is, is it'll actually be stored inside your operating system just like the way my documents are stored in Windows so if the operating system crashes or this root partition goes down then your data will also be destroyed as well if you need to reformat. And lastly we need to figure out where we're going to store the bootloader so device for bootloader. Now 
If you are going with you want Grub to configure everything, like the video I showed a while back, you can see a link to that, then you're just going to leave this as is. It's just going to be backs uh, uh, root uh, d uh, dev uh, and then whatever uh, your uh, hard drive is called. Uh, for, the, for this case, it's SDA. Yours might be slightly different, but basically you are not going to touch this, and hopefully uh, uh, Grub will install where it's supposed to, which will be on the very first boot section of that particular hard drive. If you are going with the Windows bootloader uh, and you want to have Windows, the third-party software, remember that video a while back, here's a link to refresh your memory. If you want that uh, set up, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to store, uh, you're going to have to set up the bootloader on whatever hard drive partition your operating system your Linux operating system is going to be installed in so here you can see I have SDA 1 and this is the root partition that's my operating system so I would want to install it on SDA 1 again this is if you want the Windows uh, bootloader uh, instead of the default Linux bootloader if you want the Linux bootloader you're just going to set up as the default and just let it go once you've got this all set up uh, exactly the way you want, you are going to click the Install Now button. Okay, at this point everything should set up with your partitions, and then you will get to this part of the install. Basically you're just saying where you are, so this will help set up your clock. Here it should automatically detect your keyboard. It did for me English USA, so I'm just going to click Continue. Okay, here we are going to uh, give a name. So this is going to be your login. I'm just going to be Adam. And then your computer name, this is anything that you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to call it Adam uh, VB for virtual box. We'll make it a little bit shorter. Uh, username, this is what you want displayed at, uh, at the login screen. Um, and then uh, password. Um, so now at this point, um, you could encrypt your home folder, which uh, if you want to do that for extra security, uh, be my guest. Um, I recommend require my password to log in. I think it's just excellent practice. If you know you're going to be the only one to ever use your computer, then you could say log in automatically. Remember your password. It's going to be very, very important to do anything if you want to administer your system, which I'm sure you're going to want to do. Once this is set up the way you want, click continue. And that's pretty much it. We are just going to let the install do its thing. And that should be it. Once the install is complete, you just click the restart now. Now remember, if you went with grub method for the bootloader, then you should immediately, once you restart, uh, come to the menu where you should be able to choose if you are going to boot into Windows or Ubuntu, and everything would, should work perfect. If you chose the third party where you're going to use the Windows uh, bootloader, remember uh, right now you will not immediately boot into Linux. In fact, you will have no idea that Linux is on your system. Remember, you have to go into Windows and then uh, configure the third party software to... Uh, to see the Linux partition and then after you configure that and restart then you should see Ubuntu. Well that's it for installing Ubuntu. Uh, hopefully you have a dual boot system set up and feel free to play around with Linux. At this point for me this is where the real fun begins now that uh, hopefully you have Linux on your system uh, then I can start doing some of the stuff that I really really want to go over and uh, uh, really get into uh, some of the Linux stuff. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, be sure to check out my website greenhornlinux.com. Thanks for watching.